Welcome to the The Low Carb Carb Athlete Athlete Podcast, Podcast. where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's Debbie, and have you used a CGM before? CGM is Continuous Glucose Monitor, and there's different options out there. Ideally, you can get it from your doctor, but they seem to just want to wait until you're type 2 diabetic and not be preventative. I would like us to take ownership of our health and make choices now to prevent having high, low glucose readings and optimize your health from the inside out by testing and not guessing. And that includes a CGM that goes on for 14 days and you can order one via NutriSense. And a CGM is giving you glucose updates with a small device on the back of your arm, 24 seven. Totally easy, I actually did a video on my YouTube channel, Low Carb Athlete, how to apply this CDM, first time, kind of scared, but it doesn't hurt. But it gives you real-time glucose readings. Glucose response to meals, you'll learn about what foods are reactive to you, and that could be a healthy food that you think is great, but it could raise your glucose. Simple things as stevia, for me, raise my glucose. Chewing gum, raise my glucose. Stress, when I'm driving a car and there's traffic, raises my glucose. Every stress response is a glucose response. So learn how to manage your stress. Learn learn how to pick right foods for you, unless you can, you know, do other lab testing and figure out vibrant wellness food zoomers, but it's kind of expensive for people. So if you can wear a CGM, it's a great way to learn about stress, food, exercise, stacking movement with your nutrition, figure out how to balance your blood sugar. So we want to learn more about how to exercise and eat or not eat. And morning cortisol, does it raise your glucose? If there's hidden stressors at nighttime, does your glucose go up higher while you're sleeping? So it gives us lots of clues that we can put in our investigation when we are working on your personalized fueling training and performance program to improve fat loss, performance, and longevity. So head to NutriSense website, NutriSense.io, how it works. You can learn more about your habits, your routines, your relationship to food, a little bit more, great app to use, and it can sync on to different programs. So you can put it all together. So if you want to get started with your journey in NutriSense, I suggest this to all my clients. Use at least 30 days. So you can do a 30-day, 90-day different programs, but you can pick which one you want. You get the sensor in the mail, put it on, last for 14 days, sync it to the nap, and get your readings on there. And then if you're doing my VIP coaching program, I'm working with you to correlate this data together. So begin your health optimization journey with NutriSense, and you can save on your order with our code, as usual, low carb athlete. So no carbs is not our goal, it's carb timing and using NutriSense, can, you can help figure out your nutrient dense whole food plan and when to adjust your macros based on your exercise intensity duration based on your life stressors and learn more. So it's nice to have this data. So test and not guess with NutriSense. Let me know how you like it. Hey, it's Debbie Potts, the host of the Low Carb Athlete Podcast and Debbie Potts Coaching Program and the Holistic Method approach to feeling our best, looking our best and performing our best in our second half of our life. If you are my age, around my age, 50, 51, somehow, I think you might be experiencing some signs of aging as myself that you don't like, or I don't like it on me. And I am on a mission to help myself and share my journey with you, how to avoid blaming the aging process. Instead, 
I want to bring you information how you can adjust how you fuel and train as an endurance aging athlete to succeed. And I would love for you to embrace the aging process so we are living our best life our second half of our life. We should be thriving every day as we age up and focus on training our future self now so when we are 80, 90, 100 years old, we are kicking butt. So personally, I'm on a mission for myself to get stronger, to get faster, and to gain more power. And I will share some of the research I am doing with Dr. Stacy Sims program, just finishing up her menopause 2.0 course and researching with other people in the space on keto carnivore carnivore and looking at what is best for the athlete. A lot of the information out there is not research based on the fit and active individual especially the female individual. So you have to look at always where is research from, from. So if you've been struggling getting the desired results from your current fueling, training, and performance program, you may want to listen in to some of the research I'm going to discuss in the upcoming episodes. If you have been trying to do fasting, doing maybe zero to low carb Maybe you're doing more endurance training and it's all backfiring. So if you are similar to me, figuring out the hard way that doing OMAD, doing extensive fasting and combining that with your extensive training program doesn't quite work. And then if you are an aging female athlete with their hormones changing, there's going to be some different solutions for you. So stay tuned. I'm going to share some of the research I've been diving into, what I am learning from Dr. Stacy Sims and other individuals in our space as Dr. Elizabeth Bright, and not to just talk about females, but talk about the male athlete as well. So too much fasting, too much chronic cardio, and too much carb confusion might be you as well as myself when I started fasting a lot, uh, five, 10 years ago. So let's look at how this is all an N equals one experiment and an ongoing journey that we need to course correct. And really looking at this from the perspective of a endurance athlete, and then looking at it again, different lens for the female aging athlete in her transitional years. So let me know your questions, comments, and Share if you like it. All right, let's go into the articles of today's topic. Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I'm back again to talk about my experiments, my experience, and what else is eat, what I'm exploring. <laughs> I have been working on, finally, Dr. Stacy Sims' Menopause 2.0 course, and I've read her books. I've followed her podcast, her interview she's been on. Sadly, she won't be on my show because my show says low carb athlete and she's against that. But what I do agree with her on is that I do say is carbs are not all evil. It's eating nutrient dense, whole food, carbohydrate sources in and around your workouts. When you are doing more of an anaerobic carb depleting workout, and on longer duration bike rides, and if you're doing long back-to-back -back workouts in a day or two a day, that you may feel an increase in performance if you do have strategically placed carbohydrates of good quality sources. I am pretty much I, avoiding wheat. I would say I'm non-celiac gluten sensitive or wheat sensitive. So anything with wheat I need to avoid based on my vibrant wellness wheat zoomer. And then I get instant headaches from anything that might be related to wheat. So I agree with Dr. Stacy Sims. I do find that her fasting we'll talk about as well on the show. 12 hours is what she recommends. And I do agree as a fit an active female athlete, 
we may not do well with prolonged fasting if we are doing that with our regular workout routine. So I have experienced that myself. And that's what she talks about in her course and in her interviews, in her books. Intermittent fasting may not work well for us. Men might respond differently. Females, we don't as well. And I've been digging, digging into the why. I always like to know the why. Why does this not work? Why do we need to do heavy weights? Why do we need to do plyometrics? What's the why behind it? So my new friend, Chat GPT, and I have been hanging out and I've been putting all this information into blog posts that are just really, really long information from the program notes I've been doing with Stacy Sims on her course. And I will record those into a podcast. And then my rabbit holes using chat GPT, I've been putting into my blog as well. So men and women, female, not only for females, but we endurance athletes might need to approach all the recommendations out there for fasting, zero to low, very low carbohydrate differently. If you are a high performing athlete and you are doing more anaerobic work and Dr. Stacy Sims talks about the benefits of doing more hit training, training intervals and more short intensity intervals. And if you're doing those right, as you might have listened to my Pinoe podcast and my recent interviews coming out here, it's on my YouTube channel with Dr or Daniel Crumback talking about zone training. So if you are truly doing HIT training, you're doing zone four to maybe your bottom of zone five and coming all the way back down to zone one, recover, and then go all the way back up to zone four or five. If you are doing short intensity interval trainings that Stacey Sims talks about all the time, you need to be going all the way up to zone five, 10 to 30 seconds, staying there for that 10 to 30 seconds, and then coming all the way back down to zone one and stay there until you recover and then go back up. That is true hit training. A lot of people, as Stacey Sim says, are training at a pace that's too easy to be too hard, too hard to be easy. So to me, that means that zone three, the black hole training we always talked about with Ben Greenfield coaching is doing that no man's land, you know, staying down in that zone two, mafetone, we talked about that forever, the max aerobic function heart rate, or you're doing interval trainings. Tempo is good if you're going to do a half marathon, 10K race, you know, training there in pieces, doing five, 10 minute intervals at the heart, but not doing what I see most people do, staying at that zone three heart rate for their entire run workout or their entire bike ride because they're working out usually with other people. And we are high performers. And if you're with other people, of course, we're going to get competitive and each push each other a little bit further. So that is what I'm going to try to dive into in the next few episodes on this Debbie Pot solo cast. If you want to watch the videos on the podcast conversations I've been doing with different guests, they're on YouTube, Debbie Potts Coaching or the Low Carb Athlete coaching. And you can get those notifications when they are posted. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel. So I will be putting more content on YouTube plus little Debbie workout demos. If you have workout equipment at home, you may try some of these workouts I've been posting on there. Plus I've been using be strong, blood flow, restrictive bands for mini workouts, doing exercise snack breaks during the workday when I'm at home all day. On those days, I've been trying just to do, you know, five minute workout demos for you. And then you can do that two or three rounds. So you're doing up to 20 minutes max on a hard workout. That's easy to do, especially with those BFR bands. So that's my focus on this show. It's a conversation when I have guests on and really helping us learn. I often share my own experiences so you, you can relate if you're an overachiever, high performer, if you are burned out and broken as I have been, if you are struggling with losing not just weight, but we're trying to gain muscle and lose fat weight. And what we hear out there, as I started to say earlier, in the mainstream podcast, low carb, keto, carnivore community and fasting, those are for people I find that are not healthy. They're metabolically damaged. They have health issues to work on. And 
I agree with Dr. Stacey Sims saying all that information out there, one, a lot of the research done on different fasting and protocols is done on men or male rats, and they're not done on, there might be done on women, but they're not done on fit and active females or even men. So you have to really experiment and ideally working with the coaches myself to help you figure out and navigate what works best for you and figure out a personalized program. So fasting, as I said, the 12 hours to 15 hours max, matching your fueling and your training together, making sure you're doing training hard and then recovering harder and looking at nutrition and the strategic carb timing. So talking about all of that, I think is really important on the show that we're all unique and we might be doing everything too much, but you have to remember who's that research done on, are they fit and healthy individuals? Or are they sedentary, obese, metabolically damaged? So that's, you know, a lot of people in my world think they don't agree with Dr. Stacey Sims, but the more I dive into her menopause program and I've read her books a few times that I, I get it, you know, I think, that I started to have my adrenal exhaustion 10 years ago, 2013, and I was 42. So it could have been more low energy availability combined with chronic stress from running my business full-time by myself. I get really stressed out easily. I was over training, training a lot of high heart rate, or not high heart rate, low heart rate, zone two training, but doing multiple races was at just a combination, everything. And as an FDM practitioner, we just say it's metabolic chaos is everything combined. You never know what it is. So when I got my burnout and breakdown 10 years ago, was it a result of one thing? No, it was, I'm sure part of it was low hormones as I was 42 at that time. And then there's also the combination of exercise, long work hours. I was opening, I opened my own fitness studio and owned it for 10 years. That was chronic stress financially and emotionally. And I was moving around all day, training clients, teaching classes, and then doing my own training. And then I was doing low carb to really strict keto that I wasn't doing barely any carbs. And I was doing fasting and I was just drinking coffee with butter and MCT oil in it. So I did everything too much. So my goal on the show is to really help you realize you are unique. And sometimes all this information you get out there isn't always going to work well for you. So let's dive into one article I put together. What are you doing now to improve the aging process so you can stop blaming it for feeling fat, puffy, and sluggish? So as I enter the second half of my life, I'm now 51, but I feel like I just turned 50. It's been that transition time in our life. And men and women, I think we really need to start focusing once you turn 50, kind of on the other side, second half of your life. And to improve that transition for the female athlete, we want to look at that pre-perimenopausal time to post-menopause and really how to optimize your performance in that time of your life. So I think we want to look at how are we going to be showing up to life when we're 70, 80, 90 years old. What you do now is setting yourself up for success as an older athlete, right? So one of my iron dads, I call him, we both started doing Ironmans together when I was 20 something years old. And suddenly he's turning 80 this year and still racing. And we're going to hopefully do the Challenge Athletes Foundation fun race in October here in San Diego. If you want to come down October 21st, I think it is. And it's a swim, a bike and or run. So you, it's really super non-competitive because you can do all three events or one or two. And anyways, I look at him at 80 going, okay, that's what I want to be doing, thriving every day, not just going, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that because I'm old. So if you struggle with unexplained fat weight gain, loss of lean body mass, muscle loss, even though you're lifting weights, lack of power and speed, even though you're doing running and biking and swimming, maybe you're not doing your training correctly. And then looking at 
inflammation. Do you, your joints always hurt? Do you always feel tight? Like my hips are always so tight and I've tried to do stretching at nighttime, but it's this constant battle. And I've been doing my infrared and light and sauna at night, a few nights a week and, you know, really doing what I can, but I still feel tight. So instead of me saying, oh, I'm getting older, I'm going to accept these issues. That's how it is. I've stopped doing the same workout over and over again, expecting different results. So that stop the insanity. <laughs> Who's that? Susan Powder forever ago. Stop the insanity, people. Switch your workout program. Switch your fueling and fasting program. Stop expecting different results by doing the same program over and over again. Maybe you did it 10 years ago, you kicked butt. But what I'm doing now as a 50 year old female endurance athlete, I can't train the same way and expect the same results that I did when I was 30, 40 years old. I used to do well in my races. I used to do not bragging here because people always take that as bragging, just saying I struggle running you now faster than a 10 minute mile. So give you a perspective when I was healthier and not just because I was younger, I think I still could have done this if I didn't burn and break myself down. I used to do Boston marathon. I did a three twelve marathon and three seventeen before I had my health issues. And I used to do a half marathon in hour 33, hour 35. I used to do an Ironman and my run split would be a three forty five or faster. So, uh, hello. Nowadays I, I barely, I'm just jogging and I have nothing. So I don't like saying, Oh, I'm getting older. That's, that's normal. And I hate it when people say that it's a pet peeve because it's not it is because one, I probably have cellular damage from years of my stress issues and hidden internal stresses with parasites and everything else that happened because of living life as a race. Stress is on, your immune system's down, you swim in gross waters in a triathlon, you're more susceptible to taking in a parasite, and that's an all domino effect of health issues from that. So how should you train? All right. So strength. If you are trying to get stronger as myself, I want to be lean. I like to have muscle definition. I like to have muscle tone. So instead of doing the typical 12, 10, 12 repetitions, eight, 12 repetitions, or maybe you're doing the 15, 20 reps still, that does not work. And we'll dive into why on my multiple blog articles I put together from Dr. Stacy Sims research and my chat GPT rabbit hole research. But what we want to do as female athletes specifically is lift heavy muscles because as our estrogens, primarily estradiol E2 gets lower as we get that through that transition period of life and just stop pause for a second. Uh, FYI, menopause is one day. Perimenopause is the years up five, 10 years up to that one day in time that you're menopause and menopause is stupid. It's officially 12 months without having a period, without having a menstrual cycle. So when you reach your anniversary of no cycle for an entire year, ladies, you reach when menopause, but what happens the next day after that you're in postmenopause. So menopause is literally one day in time. <laughs> and I don't know whoever created Dr. Elizabeth Wright has a great book. You can read the history of menopause. It's again, I think made up from pharmaceutical companies trying to make money, get all these names for all these phases, but really it's just transition phase in life. And you can look at it as Dr. Elizabeth Bright says you're fertile or you're not fertile. And now we're into not fertile times as you pass menopause. I'm not there yet, but uh, I'm in that time frame, the five years leading up to it, that my body needs help with the lower estrogen levels. And if you've done your Dutch hormone test, it's a much better way than just blood serum because that's just one level or one measurement, one point in time. And so I'd like people to get a Dutch urine test and metabolites, and then look at that with your blood test so you can get your cortisol measurements throughout the day. But the strength training is a really important part because we don't have those estrogen receptors. We have to fight a little bit more as female athletes to not lose that muscle strength. So we have to work harder. So with the lower estrogen levels and hormone replacement therapy, or Dr. Stacy says menopausal therapy, supplement, hormone supplements don't really change your body composition. So again, hello, there's no magic pill to take to increase lean body mass. 
you do have to take uh, more priority of your workouts, do more strength training in the hit and the plyometrics we'll talk about, and you need to do more protein. And as I like what Dr. Elizabeth Bright talks about eating healthy fats, cause that's what your hormones are made from. Steroid hormones are made from cholesterol, which is made from fat. So what type of workout should I be doing? Well, it depends on how long you've been working out. What type of workouts do you have been doing? How is your mobility? How well do you move? And example, three to five sets of three to five exercises of three to five reps of heavy weight. Now I don't like CrossFit. My body doesn't move that way. I do not like Olympic bar lifting. So I'm going to work on my schedule as I would with a client, meet the client where they're, they are at so they can figure out what program I give them as a trainer coach that they will do and enjoy. So I'm not going to do Olympic bar lifting because I don't feel comfortable doing it. It's not enjoyable to me. So I rather do free weights and plate loaded machines as a chest press and squats with the kettlebells and free weights rather than a rack. So here is what we want to look at. A, a, think of the basic movements, a squat, a lunge, deadlifts, a push, a pull, and a core exercise. So if you pick three exercises or five exercises, and even try those blood flow restrictor bands, be strong. You can get a discount off of them with our code low carb athlete, but that makes it even more amazing. If you don't have the heavy weights at home, I've been experimenting, adding in the BFR bands and putting those into what weights I do have at home. If I'm not going to the gym to get to that muscle fatigue. So ideally you want a heavy enough weight. If you have built up your foundation and been working out for a while transition into heavy lifting period of time, three to five reps, you shouldn't be able to go to another rep. So if you can do more than six reps, you know, the next set, add a little bit more weight and mix up. So you can do say a program three days a week, do it for a month and maybe change the exercises you're doing another month. So I'll write a program out for clients for the whole month if you know, they're traveling or whatnot, we'll give them different stuff to do, but body weight exercises you can do anywhere. And using the blood flow restrictor bands, you can make those exercises effective and improve your growth hormone. Why I kind of like it. So the option is to find a weight that you can't do more than five, six reps. If you do those, say, three to five exercises that you picked for that workout a day, it shouldn't be longer than 45 minutes. If you warmed up, cool down, your main workout might be just 20 minutes. If you're working out an hour, you're probably not going hard enough because you shouldn't be able to keep going. So you should be muscle fatigued by them. So three to five reps. If I'm doing three to five sets, I've been trying to do, for example, five rounds of three to four exercises or five exercises and doing them over five rounds that maybe at first I could do five, six reps, but I get to a certain point, the end of that AMRAP or which is as many rounds as possible. If I'm doing five sets, whatever the workout I'm doing that day that I can only get do one. So I almost get to a point of muscle fatigue that I get down to one rep is all I have left. That's getting to muscle fatigue. Always getting in some core work, planks, side planks. I call them around the world that you're doing a plank, rotate, side plank, rotate, your face up plank. So holding tabletop or bridge and then flipping over, you got side plank and then flip over, you can do bridging uh, and then planks and variations you can do. 30 second hold. If you're going over the minute, I think you're, you know, it's better to just break it up. Okay, so my goal is to teach you how to trend, may, make this transition in our second half of life to be smooth, to be easy transition. More for your female listeners that are losing uh, their hormones and really teaching you as a person, female athlete in that transition period of life that you really need to support your adrenal glands. Our doctors don't educate us that when you're going through menopause that one day, 
leading up to that, as your hormones get lower, your ovaries stop producing those hormones, but your adrenals do. So you have to give love to adrenals and manage your stress. So our adrenals are not experiencing chronic stress, but acute stress, and then a proper recovery and repair. And we can go back and listen to what measuring your heart rate variability is, knowing that you're not in sympathetic dominance. And so measuring and tracking your or ring, whoop, whatever you're using to make sure you've recovered and repaired and tracking your HRV and heart rate and body temp and all that. Okay. So goal is to get stronger. So we want to lift heavy weights, increase the cross-sectional area of the muscle. I want to gain power and speed. So we need to signal the muscles to maintain and build the lean mass. So we want to change how we train to gain power and speed neuromuscular improvements. We need to increase the neuromuscular contraction. Stacy Sims talks about the acetylcholine. So neurotransmitter production needs to be neat. We need to create a strong muscle contraction. So we go into exercise physiology of myosin activation to contract the muscles. So we need to work on improving our neuromuscular system. So how we train to do that, we need to increase our metabolism. So instead of thinking you need a pill or taking hormone replacement, that's not what you need to do. You actually need to increase your lean body mass. So instead of doing chronic cardio, which might burn calories, you need to focus on increasing your lean body mass. That's by lifting heavy weights, doing the HIIT training, doing plyometrics and prioritizing protein each meal, not eating one egg. People six grams. You need to have four eggs and get you know, 20, 30 grams per meal by, you know, 30 to 50 grams each meal spread out throughout the day. So you're getting Dr. Gabrielle Lyons protocol of that one gram per ideal body weight is a higher end of protein that you need as an athlete, especially as a female athlete, you need to hit those higher protein numbers and then get your essential fats and carb timing around there. So we also need to improve our strength, stability, and mobility. So as we age, we want to train the right way to improving the aging process, but we have more inflammation as we lose that estrogen. We are more apt to feeling tight in our joints as I do my hips. And I find I, I need to do more mobility drills, more stretching and looking at more anti-inflammatory foods and supplements. So why should we change how we train for endurance events since aging female athletes? How do we improve this transition into our second half of our life? So let's go into that a little bit more. What Dr. Stacey Sims shares in her programs, podcast interviews, and you find all this information on her website and her blogs. But I like to get into, as I said, the why. Why do we need strength training? Why do we need high intensity training what are the benefits of HIT? What are the benefits of short intensity interval training? So let me just touch on a little bit of this because I want to keep these podcasts to 30 minutes. So Stacy Sims, Dr. Stacy Sims shares the research and that's why it's interesting on learning from her on the why, but she's looking at from a female high performer athlete, right? So here we go. Fat adipose lipid whatever you want to call fat is your adipose tissue, lipid turnover. So it changes our lipid turnover changes as we get older, how we are using and storing fat changes in our body weight. What's called lipid turnover is how we are using fat and how we are storing fat. And this isn't about burning fat. So female athletes in this transition phase of life, with the lower estrogens, it's how we are using fat and storing fat changes. So we see changes in the lipid uptake in the adipose tissue. To change body fat and our body composition, we need to look at changing the rate of lipid up uptake, I wrote that wrong, into the tissue. So lipid, fat use of the body, but we have an in, we, we use fat, but we have an increased amount due to dysregulation in the cell. So she talks about this way better than me. I can't really explain it, but we have a dysregulation within the muscle cell 
She talks about oxidative stress. We have insulin resistance. We have glucose issues, taking uptaking glucose and to signal the increase of fat uptake into the cell. She talks about this lipid turnover. So we need to signal the lipid, the cells to uptake fat, the amount of fat storage to allow for increased need of fat. So this fuel source changes as we get older. This is why we need to do HIIT training because it helps us how we are using fat and storing fat. We don't need to worry about how we burn fat. That's not necessary. We need to worry about using fat for fuel and not storing it. So I butchered that, but that's what she talks about. You can look it up on why do you hit training is the change in lipid turnover, lipid uptake into the adipose tissue. So let's continue on. And what are the benefits of HIIT training? So HIIT training is high intensity interval training. We endurance athletes tend to do, well, actually, if you've been training correctly, you're doing more training zone two, max aerobic function, heart rate, where you're building that fat burning engine. We've talked about for 10 years on this podcast. Most athletes I think are in zone three. That's why I watch people and going, okay, they're not in zone two. They're huffing and puffing. Ideally you're doing zone two training and then we need to stop doing all of our workouts in zone two. So say example, I'm doing Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, my long bike ride Saturday, long run on Sunday, but those weekday run bike run workouts or my brick workouts I need to maybe warm up in zone two, 30 minutes, but I'm going to finish with some intervals. So HIIT training, why would I do HIIT training more often as I age? Here we go. Increase in blood glucose control via the improvement in insulin sensitivity with one or more minute of hard work as the body needs more glucose to come into the cells to fuel the work. So this is pulling the glucose in from the blood and increases our insulin sensitivity at rest. Because as we age, we get more insulin insensitive as our hormones for female athletes get lower. But I think you have to remember too, HIIT training is one minute to max five minute intervals up in that zone four. Short intensity interval training is zone five when we do Panoe testing, and that would be that 10 to 30 seconds all out. So one or more minute of hard work is HIIT training. To fuel the work, you're decreasing the, the blood glucose levels. It's a more glucose dependent fuel source, right? Sprints. So that's why we want to take the glucose that's higher in the blood and get it taken up for fuel source during the HIIT training. Now, she talks also about vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF. This gives us increase in nitric oxide, which improves blood vessel function and cardiovascular health when we're doing over one minute of exercise. We're seeing increase in growth hormone, stimulating growth factor, and increase in free testosterone, a decrease in estrogen. So you think, well, why would we want that? We already have low estrogen, but this counters cortisol. So estrogen is not needed to be used in the exercise. Cellular adaptation benefits stimulates mitochondria to improve and grow. So we get mitochondria benefits. So one minute or more of high intensity interval training will help for mitochondrial biogenesis. When we are working at higher intensity levels, we have cellular stress that equals to damage that increases our inflammatory response, gives us that stress from the exercise. So we have more response to that stress. And we have improved integrity of skeletal muscle and 
we lower our oxidative stress with antioxidation. So we are reducing our oxidative stress when we do high intensity intervals. We reduce inflammation with the HIIT training. So we have this improved anti-inflammatory cytokine release. We have an improvement in our brain health. So we see an increase in BDNF, brain-derived neurofactor after exercise. So that's a big one. External stressors to create environment, boost our BDNF, helping that brain health and improves our cognition and memory benefits. We see a better metabolic control without the hormones available. So that's a benefit because we have those low hormones. We're finding alternative ways to get the same benefits from exercise when we don't have those hormones available for the female athletes. So as we lose estrogen, we lose the signaling, the blood vessel function. So we can improve this with HIIT training because we get a strong stimulus to increase cardiovascular health and improve blood vessel health. So the whole point of the recommendations from Dr. Stacy Sims of doing heavy weightlifting, less chronic cardio, more high intensity interval training. So warm up and then do HIIT training to the finish. Maybe it's a 45 minute session more short intensity interval training and more plyometrics in your training program, take out the volume and keep with the long bike ride and a long run on the weekend, but the weekday runs, workouts and strength training, I would mix it up and change how you're doing those training programs. So I go back to I don't know if you've been doing triathlons as long as I have, but years ago, we talked about this guy that won Ironman Hawaii and he was not, he didn't win it, but it was top age grouper. And he was an interview on Ben Greenfield's podcast years ago. I got to look this up, but it was about training minimalist effective dose type of minimalist training for Ironman. And I was thinking about this as I was reading over and doing this program with Stacey Sims on her online course that, you know what, that's what that guy did back then. If you're working full time and you're trying to fit in your Ironman schedule, you don't have time unless you fit it in. You, you'll end up having what I had, adrenal exhaustion, burning yourself out. Your body systems break down by doing too much every day. But if you did these workouts, like I've been doing now, 30 minutes, and then do some HIIT training, make it more effective, minimal effective dose. It's kind of what they did back then. That's what almost us females need to do as we get older. So lastly, the, the chat GPT rabbit hole here, I'll finish up with anti-inflammatories, cytokines. Those are signaling molecules that play a crucial role in regulating the immune system and maintaining immune system balance. So they help counteract the pro-inflammatory signals produced during the immune response, preventing excess inflammation and tissue damage. So I'm all about anti-inflammatory. As I said, my, my hips are really tight. I feel like my range of motion is changing. And now I'm starting to do these higher intensity workouts on days I feel rested. I, some days I, like yesterday, was tired all day. So my workout was easy. So you got to listen to your body. But how can you help decrease some of this inflammatory cytokines? So here's how you can improve the anti-inflammatory diet. So what you're eating, you know, that I'll hear and read about all sorts of different anti-inflammatory diet because I have carnivore keto world, and then you get this more paleo. So I think it depends on, you know, getting the healthy fats, getting nutrients as omega-3 fatty acids, the vitamin D, D3 with K2 antioxidants help promote the release of anti-inflammatory cytokines. So a lot of articles will say, have diet rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats. Well, uh, that doesn't work for my body. If I right now I'm trying to avoid eating as much plant toxins, but maybe still need some fiber, getting your broccoli and Brussels sprouts and well, actually Brussels sprouts make me burp lately. So I think I have to take that out, but I haven't even been feeling like vegetables. I just been doing more meat and fat and having some iceberg lettuce with a wedge salad, you know, extended my vegetables lately, but we have to make sure we get those essential fatty acids. So having some grass fed butter, grass fed meat, getting your fish, getting your vitamin D3, K2 and a 
having it with your food and really making sure, again, those antioxidants. Other suggestion, of course, regular exercise, reduction in chronic inflammation, increase in anti-inflammatory cytokine production, combining your aerobic zone two type exercise with strength training exercises, as we talked about. Talks next about stress management. Chronic stress can lead to increase in inflammation, which I always talk about in seminars when I'm speaking is that chronic stress impacts all. So when I was on the low carb cruise, everyone was talking about carnivore and animal-based diet and fasting and, and doing keto low, low carb, but I'm talking about chronic stress. No one wants this boring subject, I guess, but stress impacts all efforts. So if you're stressed out every day, racing through the day, having that rushing woman syndrome, having life is that not a race addicted to busyness syndrome, it's all efforts are out the door because it impacts chronic stress impacts everything. So try to focus on deep breathing exercises, just taking one minute, slow down, meditation, maybe it's meditation and movement while you're walking with morning sunshine, walking on the beach, that can be walking meditation, yoga, trying to do yoga, you know, ideally outside, maybe before bed, mindfulness, you know, really helps to manage your stress and promote anti-inflammatory environment, sleep getting adequate sleep, sleep hygiene. So it's not just about going to bed, but making sure you're getting quality sleep, that seven to nine hours of sleep. I use aura ring whoop. You know, I don't like wearing something on my wrist when I sleep, but you know, working on what you're doing to improve that sleep starts with what you're doing in the morning and creating a sleep hygiene routine. And I am really strict about my sleep routine And I might be kind of boring weekdays. I don't like to go out. I like to be at seven o'clock. I like to be home, (laughs) go to bed at eight o'clock. So I'm up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning, 5 a.m., depending on the day. All right. Avoid smoking, of course, and alcohol, excessive alcohol. That will contribute to inflammation in your body and hinder the body's ability to produce anti-inflammatory cytokines. Probiotics really looking at, I like people to do their uh, gut tests. I use GMAP or Genova Diagnostics three-day stool test, but looking at your gut health, fermented vegetables, fermented foods, supplements, my yogurt I was making, I need to do again, but Dr. Um, what's his name? The super gut book. That's easy to do. Herbal supplements, turmeric, ginger, green tea, they have compounds with anti-inflammatory properties that can influence cytokine production. I've been using um, NAC and curcumin mix and having that and taking some other supplements, kind of been trying some Qualia Mind Life supplements, five days on, two days off right now. Maintaining healthy weight. So I would look at not just weight, but your fat, body fat percentage. We want to look at your lean tissue versus fat. So don't just weigh yourself. I don't like weighing myself ever because I'm tall and it's never a pretty number to me, but I'm taller. So I'm going to weigh more and I'm more muscle. So looking at body fat percentage, I think is more beneficial than just weight, but that will help you know if you're getting more inflammation. And then hydration. Remember, Mineral balance is key. So I use LMNT or Relight. You can use either of them or great. Use our code always is low carb athlete for my favorite products to get a discount and support the show with my affiliate links. Now, vitamin mineral supplementation, the minerals I just said as in the water and your hydration, because you don't sweat out plain water, you sweat out minerals. So always remember when you're sweating more, there's drier, you're working out more outside in the summertime. It's making sure, you know, you have minerals in your water and I salt everything. I've been really must be depleted in salt because I've been using Redmond's real salt. I bought one of those 10 pound bags and we just refill our salt maker or salt shaker. And I pour salt on my hard boiled eggs. I put it in my coffee. I put it in all my food in my water. I just can't get enough of it. So I must be really low because your body tells you what you need, innate intelligence of your body if you learn to listen to it. But also we want an adequate intake of vitamins as vitamin C, vitamin D. Remember fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. So if you're not digesting your fat properly, if you're not eating enough fat, but then maybe you are eating fat and you're not digesting it, you perhaps need some digest enzymes with the help bile support 
but you need to be able to break down those fat soluble vitamins and or eat them with fat uh, that and zinc. But also if you eat pylori, you're going to be low zinc, you're going to be low B12, you're going to be low in amino acids because H. pylori is in your stomach, the organ. And so we're not digesting our protein and we're not going to get all the, the vitamin minerals from that process in your stomach of breaking down the protein. So often H. pylori is correlated with low zinc and low B12 and low iron. So we want to look at that for sure. If you're doing lab testing, H. pylori it seems to be elevated on everyone I test. All right, so we can go into next time because I get tired after talking this long. Why do we push ourselves into a sit workout? Sit is short intensity interval training. You have to be rested, I think, and be able to work hard to get your heart rate to zone five. So it's not something you do every day. And for hormone cycling women, you might want to look at what day of your cycle where you can do a sit training. And maybe that's like after your cycle to, you know, the middle two weeks and really look at when you feel most energetic to plan, maybe end of your workout, you're going to add some 20 second sprints. I like to do it on our bike ride. It's a perfect route. I have that we go down kind of slight hill uphill, but then on, we do an out and back and come back. And then there's pieces in there that I can really push it hard and get my heart rate up. And then it levels out or goes down. So I have recovery built in and go again. So uh, we'll talk about that and then why plyometric training. So I'll put the link to this uh, blog post in the show notes, debbiepotts.net. I shared all my rabbit holes, why resistance training over body weight and cardio, hypertrophy training over strength. Why do we lose strength as we get older, estradiol? that E2, you know, what all the changes is goes on and on and on. So I can't record all this, but just where I'm putting my notes and solutions, solutions for you. But this is what I do as a coach trying to help people figure out, okay, what are our common problems? Feeling puffy, increased fat, loss of lean tissue, feeling sluggish, lack of power, decreased speed. This is why I'm changing how I am training because it is something I can control. I just need to change how I'm training differently. So Fridays, for example, I'm just doing a little mobility leg hip workout at the gym, then going for 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, and then going to run and doing a warm up 15 minutes. Then I do 30 seconds on a gradual hill doing that five to 10 times. And then I stop doing those intervals when I get slower, not faster. So you can tell when you're starting to suck <laughs> so you can stop that. So let me know your questions, your concerns, maybe you're trying to struggle, figure out what to do, how to do that. So if you're interested in learning more, head to debbiepotts.net. You can read all my notes on the blog posts and my coaching packages. What I've created now is a, a six month program that just, you can track your training peaks and I meet with you once a month. And then I just track your accountability log every week in there. There's more of a health investigator package that we're doing the whole lab test and assessment and protocol, and then checking in on that as we get the protocol started. And then there's in your nutrition program where we're checking your macros and figure out accountability on checking that every week. So there's monthly programs. There's also just a place to start with my assessment package that I just review nutritional therapy and take form a three day food and mood log, your health history, and what are your goals? And I go through all that information and then we do two 45 minute coaching calls. So that's my assessment package. And I try to make that affordable because it's a lot of time I'm spending diving into all these intake forms and especially nutritional therapy assessment and your food log and looking at all this, I'm looking at the why, because I think a lot of people are seeing doctors, functional medicine, doctors and naturopaths included, and they're still getting lab tests, but they're treating the symptoms. So if they're low in enzymes, they're low in zinc or their thyroid markers low, you're getting medication for that, but you're not looking at why is that marker low, correlating all the data together, putting the pieces of the puzzle together to create a personalized coaching program for you based on the lab, based on your assessments and the intake forms, because we want to look at 
your holistic method elements, nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, your stress, your movement throughout the day, digestion, your gut health, your gut terrain, your mineral balance, doing a hair mineral tissue analysis test, HTMA, with your hydration and keeping that and check but the gratitude, happiness, play, laughter. So much of us are, and I always was this way, so intense, such a high charging athlete and individual that I was so serious. And I think it was, I was probably high cortisol for so many years until the body couldn't keep up with my life anymore. And then I got to be so low in my cortisol, my hormones. So I get a hypo function in everything, my adrenals, my thyroid, you know, then you get all the gut issues because your immune system's down and you, you're just susceptible to everything. So my purpose is to help all of you avoid as athletes, endurance athletes and aging athletes and the female athlete, avoid going through what I went through and it, and teach you the tools that you need as an individual because you are unique in your life and your schedule, your family, your work. That is unique to you and to figure out what is the best fueling training and performance program for daily life works best for you based on where you are now and based on your goals and your your symptoms you might be experiencing, what have you been doing that's not working and let's figure out what you need to do that's going to work and then course correct as we go. So test and not guess, but remember you can't out supplement poor lifestyle habits. So you can do all the lab testing and take all the supplements you want. And I used to do that. Remember, if you ever read my book, Life is Not a Race, it's on Amazon. I was seeing eight, 10 different people trying to get help. I was going doctor to doctor, naturopath, acupuncture, blah, blah, blah. And getting the right labs, getting the right supplements, but it didn't change the rest of my life. So you have to do it all together. As I say, train the whole athlete from the inside out. The eight elements of the holistic method are there for a reason, because that's not what I did. <laughs> so we need to look at optimizing your health your fitness, your well-being all together. So head to debbiepotts.net to learn more. And don't forget to go to the YouTube channel where I'm posting the interviews that I am doing for the podcast over there. So start transitioning more to the YouTube channel because it's easy and the videos are there and it's just the way to go. So questions, comments, feedback, suggestions, head debbiepotts.net or lowcarbathlete at icloud.com is me. So have a great day. I would love to hear from you. So if you like what you're listening to, share it with your fellow athletes. I'm sure there's a lot of other endurance athletes that are those high charging individuals, athlete or non-athlete, but we might just be struggling trying to get results by doing all the right things we think are right, but it's backfiring. So let's help other people know that it is a one size not a one size fits all approach. We have to individualize the fueling training program for you. So let's talk soon. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine or fresh air and time in nature. Hey, before you leave my fellow endurance athletes, just a reminder, if you like what you listened to today, please help me out and share this episode with your community of fellow aging athletes. Also, you can head to debbiepotts.net to set up a free discovery call with me to learn about my personalized coaching programs. If you are struggling to get the desired results, even though you're doing all the so-called right things you hear about out there in our community, you may just need to adjust your workout and test to not guess with functional lab testing, nutritional therapy assessment, and get a personalized program to learn how to best fuel, train, and perform for the unique you to improve the aging process and work on training your future self now. So head to debbiepotts.net and let's talk more. Lastly, don't forget to check out some of my favorite products using our discount code to support the show, Low Carb Athlete. If you head to Keon, Paleo Valley, LMNT, 
and NutriSense. So check out my favorite products, learn more, and save with our code Low Carb Athlete. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and see you next time.